Hello, welcome to Unlock Layout and Design YouTube channel and today we will speak about IO and ESD. This is a lengthy uh, lecture and I have split that into many parts. This is part 1. First of all, let us try to understand what are these bond pads or IO pads and what is this wire bonding. So this is my IC, whatever you see here. So this is the IC where I have all my circuitry and then this should connect to the external world. Okay. So I have a chip like this. This is my die area. Die area is nothing but my circuit and from here I need to connect to the external pin. So these are the pins of the IC. Okay. So now for this how do I connect? I put a pad and from there I connect a wire bond. So that's exactly what is shown here. So these are the pins what you see here. Okay. That's what is called as lead frame here. So then what happens? These are the pads on that a solder ball will sit. So that's the reason why this needs to be there. Bond pad is required. A solder ball will sit on top of that we will have a bond wire. So that's how it connects to the external world. So these are the bond pads what you can see here. They are all on the periphery. So whatever you see here, these are all the bond pads and that's how it connects to the core here. It's getting connected to the core. Okay. There are some circuitries. We will discuss about all of them. This is how it connects here and from here to the external world, it connects to the wire bond. And this is my external pin. Okay. So generally this will be like 50 micro by 50 micro or it can be like 80 micro by 80 micro or it could be as high as 100 micro by 100 micro. So IO pads are put on the periphery and along with the IO pad we have some uh, like standard circuitry which is also added with, with that. Okay, Every pad comes with all these uh, circuitry. We will look into that. This is the basic pad wherein I put a solder ball and then connect it to the external pin. Okay, So this is the pad whatever you see in the green. So then we also have other circuitry known as the ESD protection circuitry. We will discuss this in detail. And then we also have other circuitry known as the drivers and tree drivers, okay, which are required to drive big capacitive loads on the external circuit. And we also have level shifters which are required between core and IO. So all these things we will discuss in detail, but basically all these put together is called as an IO pad. So all these things would be inside an IO pad and this dimension would be like so in FinFETs and all, it will be as small as 50 micro by 50 micro, the entire thing. And in uh, bigger uh, process nodes, it would be around 130 micro by 130 micro. So around the in this um, dimensions, you would see. So we saw uh, what are all the you know, circuitry that are present in the IO pad. We have like level shifters. Then we have like ESD and we have like uh, drivers and then the pad okay so we have so first we will try to understand what is the need for level shifter so we have something known as the core core circuit and the io circuit okay so majority of it will be the core and which will work at a lower voltage say 1.8 volt and the io works at 3.8 3 volt. Now, IO connects to the external world. So, from IO we have pad and from that we go, go to the pin. Okay. So, this will be the external world. So, the interface is always at 3.3 volt whereas the entire circuit that works inside is at 1.8 volt. So, what is the need for core and IO? I have a separate video. Please go and visit that video. Please go through that video in that it is covered in detail why we need core and IO. But then like we need level shifters in between them. So this works at 1.8 volt. This works at 3.3 in between this blue thing. Whatever you see here is the level shifter. So we will have level shifters. Obviously we need a signal that goes from core to IO and to outside that needs to be converted from 1.8 volt to 3.3. That is a low to high. And then from whatever comes in from outside that will be from 3.3 volt. 1.8 volt that is a high to low high to low level shifters we will discuss all of them in detail now we will try to understand high to low level shifter 
So whenever I have a signal that comes from the external world to the IC, so this is my IO and this is my core. So obviously this one is 3.3 and this is 1.8. It did not be 3.3 and 1.8. Um, core can be uh, anything lesser. Nowadays uh, it's even like uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 volt and IO will be 1.2. So normally IO will be higher, core will be lower. I have just taken an example of 3.3 to 1.8 volt. So the signal will be like 0 to 3.3 volt and then here at the output we should get 0 and 1.8 volt. So obviously this is 1.8 volt signal is also 1.8 volt supply and here V in varies from 0 to 3.3 okay so when v in is a zero so that time this is off and this is on and output here would be like 1.8 volt and when v in is 3.3 volt then this is off this is on and out, uh, output here would be zero volt okay so the inversion of this one would be like zero volt and 1.8 volt so for a zero here this will be like 1.8 and here it will be like once again 0. So, shall we understand that again? So, when I have a, so this, so this varies from 0 to 3.3 volt. This is 1.8 and this is 1.8. So, here I need 0 and 1.8. When this is 0, this is 0. And this is high, but high voltage is now 1.8 volt. And this is, is again low and I get 0. For a 0, I got a 0. So then I give 3.3 volt. So then here it will uh, undergo inversion. It will be 0. And then again it will undergo inversion. And it will be not 3.3, but 1.8 volt. So I will get 1.8 volt. I will get this one. So this is a simple uh, level shifter is nothing but a pair of inverters connected uh, serially. But most important thing is the supply for this will be 1.8 volt. And the even more important thing is when I give a 3.3 volt, this should be a high voltage device. High voltage device which is capable of withstanding 3.3 volt. It's also called as IO device or a high voltage device or it is also called as thick gate oxide device thick gate oxide device so it's very important that this and this both the MOS and PMOS of the first inverter should be a high voltage device otherwise it will break down okay now next we will see the next type of level shifter which is a low to high level shifter obviously when a signal comes from core to the external world through the io so this is 3.3 and this is 1.8 so it should change from 0 to 1.8 to it should change from 0 to 3.3 volt this kind of level shifting should happen so we'll do it the same way so we will have an inverter and we will try and connect the signal same way so this is 3.3 volt here it will be from 0 to 1.8 volt when it is 0 this is off this is on and the output voltage will be 3.3 volt so there is no problem in this so next we'll try it again so when i have a inverter like this So this is 3.3 volt and this changes from 0 to 1.8. I give 1.8 volt. This is on and output is low which is 0. But there is a catch here. There is a very important catch here. When this is 1.8 volt, not only is this on, this also gets a VGS. So even this will be on. So there will be a weak current, leakage current there will be a leak, big leakage current and this will not be 3.3 volt this will not be 3.3 volt this will not be 0 volt it will be something in between 
okay there will be some in between voltage basically both of them are turning on which is wrong okay i want if this is on this should be off compulsively i have to ensure otherwise there will be a big current that will flow from vdt to ground so our main idea is when nmos is on pmos should be off this should be off okay so this is 3.3 when i give a 1.8 volt here so this will be on and output will be zero but then like here i i don't want a 1.8 volt here if i give a 1.8 volt here this will turn on so i have to give 3.3 volt if i give 3.3 volt there is no vgs and this will be off so in that context we have this circuit here when i give 1.8 volt here what happens is this one is like high so this is on and this voltage is zero okay and when this is high this one is low this output of this inverter is zero and the same zero is here so then this one is off this transistor is off when this voltage is zero what happens so this gate is also connected to zero this will get a vgs this is 3.3 volt and this is on and output will be 3.3 volt and when this is 3.3 volt what happens to this this gate voltage is 3.3 and this is off this is exactly our requirement when the bottom transistor nmos is on we don't want the top transistor to be off when this is 1.8 volt this is on i don't want this to be on it should not be on it should be off for that i need a 3.3 volt that's exactly what i am getting here so by connecting these back to back this entire thing back to back i am getting this uh, way and now for a 1.8 volt i am getting 3.3 volt and no way there is a uh, path from VDT to ground. So this is on, this is off. This is off, this is on. There is no a straight path between VDT to ground in both the channels. And I am getting a faithful a level shifting. When 1.8 volt, I am getting 3.3 volt. So next we will also analyze what happens when it is zero. So it was 1.8 volt. I got 3.3 volt here. I got a 3.3 volt. When it is zero. So I have this zero. So obviously this is half. Then when I have zero here, I'll get here 1.8 volt. So here this will be 1.8 volt. So this is on. When this is on, the voltage here will be zero volt. So this will get a zero volt as well. And VDH will be 3.3. This will be on and I'll get a 3.3. So this is also 3.3 and this will be and when this is off, this is again zero because this is on, this is zero. So for a zero, I got back a zero. And when this is on, this is again off. When this is off, this is on. So always again, I'm not getting a, a, a straight a path from VDT to ground. So that's how this low to high level shifter works. So basically this is little tricky. It's not a straightforward implementation, but this is how it works. Hi, thanks for watching this video and we will uh, cover the other topics like the different types of IO pads and then the ESD protection, then ESD event, how it occurs and how a diode works. And then we'll also look into like uh, human body model, charge device model, machine model, all these things in the uh, upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and then please hit, uh, don't forget to hit the like button if you have enjoyed this video and please share and subscribe. Thank you.